thoughts, Josh. So yeah, from there we'll transition over to Chris FIFO, and we have some we have some great echinaceas in our lineup from both from Darwin plants, from Darwin perennials, from Keeft seed. We have some fantastic echinacea, and here to take us through those is Chris FIFO. Thank you for that, Jim. All right, take it away. There you go. I'm difficulty with my video here. No problem. Yeah, it's coming through nice and clear now. He's coming up with the sombreros right there. They look very nice there, the Fiesta Orange. There we go. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, this is Chris Fifo coming to you from Carpentersville, Illinois. And uh, welcome to our Echinacea display at CAST 20. Uh, there are some exciting things happening with Echinacea this year. And so I'm very excited to introduce to you the new Artisan series from Seed, as well as new introductions to the Sombrero series. And more importantly, we're going to discuss how do we use these along with the current uh, Echinaceas that we have on the market with the powwows and the Cheyenne Spirit. And so first introduce a couple of the new colors of the Sombrero series. We have the new Rosada, a very nice deep rose color and the new Fiesta Orange. Now we have 14 colors now, and so we're only looking for very unique items to go with the Echinacea. And so Fiesta Orange, we have single and semi-double flowers on the same plant, and so that gives it a unique look. And what I really like about the Sombrero series in general is the bulk and the body of the plants. The number of branches, the number of flower stems they get on them. Um, I haven't seen anything in any other Echinaceas out there. So that's what really makes these stand apart. And there's the new rosada. It really fills a color gap in the uh, whole Sombrero series that we had. And so yes, 14 colors now in the Sombreros, and we're only looking to add very unique items after this. And so these do have a strong position in the markets. We're looking at premium programs here, one gallon to three gallons. Um, good position in the branded market as well. And like I said, these are very easy to schedule and grow first year. They don't require a short day treatment, and this is one of my favorite items for fall programs. Uh, we see a picture I took there on the left, the Sombrero Salsa Red, that was last October I took that, more than 20 flowers on that same plant. And of course, we gotta give a shout out to the Baja Burgundy, the AAS winner last year. And in the center there, just a nice retail supply, uh, display of, uh, I believe that is Granada Gold from uh, another fall program. And so after the sombreros, like I said, it's getting fairly full now. Uh, we'll go into our fall program first. Um, one of my favorites for fall, it is a no-brainer. You take a 72, you plant it week 26. Put in a gallon container, you can put, these are best grown outdoors. And so control release fertilizer, liquid feed, you can put them on a dripper, you can water with sprinklers, and you don't have to do anything else. They grow themselves. 10 weeks later, you, this is the kind of display that you have. So it really is a no-brainer for fall programs. And then I'd like to introduce the new POCO series of Sombrero. Uh, POCO, as the name implies, is a more compact series. These are gonna be 14 to 16 inches tall. And uh, we're gonna begin the series with a POCO yellow. This is absolutely amazing in that it is non-fading. Uh, we can see the oldest flower there is starting to get some brown tips on it, but it's still got a really great yellow color on it. And so that is going to be the, the theme for the POCO series, the compactness and the non-fading. And we also have the POCO hot coral. This was Sombrero hot coral. It had always been more dwarf than the Sombrero series, so we rolled that into the POCOs as well. And there we can see the comparison of the height difference in there between the Sombrero and the POCO. And so it's going to add a unique look. It's going to be a more compact series, and there's going to be plenty more colors to come with that. You can see the neat tidy uh, display it gives you here in the garden. Uh, as I mentioned, yes, non-fading. We kept the Sombrero name with this series because it does have the same bulking and branching and same culture as the Sombrero series. And so it can be grown the exact same way for uh, fall programs. Um, one thing it's not going to be suitable for is some of the larger containers. This might be nice in, say, a patio bowl or something like that, or a trio in a bowl with the cute size. 
And I'm very excited to introduce the Artisan Collection of Echinacea. Ping Ren is the breeder for these, been working on for a long time. We're coming out with a soft orange and the red ombre to begin the series. There's more colors to come. And first, looking at this video here, I'd like to address the purpling you can see on the foliage. This has been a common issue with the powwows, and this is a phosphorus deficiency. And so when the growers begin to see that, I would apply higher rates of phosphorus, maybe a fertilizer like 20, 10, 20. That's going to stave off any further purpling. And so culture on the artisans is going to be very similar to the powwows, which we're all accustomed to. Scheduling is also going to be the same. So those are another suitable one for that short day, that black cloth program for fall or for early spring. And here we can see some of the additional colors yet to come. Uh, those are still a little ways off. Excellent, excellent items. Here we can see on the left, this is one of my favorite photos of the soft orange. It's a single plant of the artisan soft orange in a gallon pot. And so just a really beautiful display there. Uh, this breeding has been referred to in the past as straight colors from the Cheyenne Spirits, but it is actually not. It is brand new breeding. And this is a revolutionary new product. This is an F1 hybrid. There's really nothing else comparable out there on the market. And so a lot of excitement surrounding this is offered as amplified seed, meaning it's got improved vigor and germination percentage. 85% um, is our minimum standard, but I've seen a lot of lot numbers that have been 90% plus. And so a lot of excitement surrounding this. Once again, this is gonna be more of a premium type of program, kind of up there with the sombreros. Um, it can still um, be put into other programs as well. It's all gonna depend on what you need uh, your echinacea program as far as what your selections are gonna be. If you need the extreme uniformity, it's gonna be the sombreros. If you need a high volume item, you might want to look at the seed items, such as artisans. Uh, seed on the sh shelf beats uh, the tissue culture in the laboratory, and that's where the, the sombreros and the pocos are coming from. But if you want a full program, a whole range of colors, I would go with sombreros, possibly supplemented with the artisans then. Uh, you can mix the two of them together. Basic programs, Powwow and Cheyenne Spirit, they're still going to have a really good place in the market. I don't see those going away uh, by any means. Another question is going to be input requirements, seed versus tissue culture, and then of course our price point. Uh, what size containers are these going to go into, or is the price point that we're going to have for an output? And I put together this chart here that's going to show some of the common uses I see uh, all of these echinaceas being used in. They're all used in branded programs. Uh, they're all suitable for 2.5s. Uh, only a handful of them are going to be suitable for those very large containers. Uh, POCO is definitely not going to go there, but artisans can. And so just uh, some easy to use charts on how to use these. And so anybody have any questions after that? I'm open for questions. Yeah, uh, Chris, just going back a little bit on the Aqualegia. There was a question on the Aqualegia related to timing. And of course, still on there, we could kind of circle back to that one. And uh, we're just related to timing of the of the early the early bird series and in particular for the southern part of the u.s mm -hmm. yeah. you want to take a core go ahead yeah timing yeah you can you can timing is, is according to the season uh we have some references for instance you can do a long cycle uh, a transplant in let's say uh early winter then you'd have about 16 weeks trans um, um let's say production time uh, if you are, let's say, going more toward end of winter, you have about 12 weeks finish time. Um, so that's about, it depends on, on where you are in the cold period. So it's 12 to 16 weeks on average. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. So, uh, Chris, uh, right here on the cast app, right there for that echinacea. There you go. You got it. Very nice on the echinacea. Yeah, beautiful Our product there. Artisans are going on the, strong on the voting, I understand. That's good. On the artisan series there. Yes, yeah, like nice. I said, there, there's been a lot of excitement. Uh, people have been talking about these for a long time, so I'm very excited to finally see these make it to the market. The seed is available this week for those.